Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Lissa and I am the owner and creator here at Handmade Soap and Shampoo Company, a rather good lather. If I sound a little bit muffled, it's because I have my dust mask on, getting ready to make some orange and tangerine bath bombs today and I already have all of my powders ground up and pre-sifted and in the bowl already, but once I start mixing everything, the powders are going to fly up in the air, so it's important to have your dust mask on so you're not breathing in all those small little fine particles. Um, so again, I have everything already pre-measured, ground up. I grind up all of my powders, my citric acid, my SLSA, um, my baking soda, um, I also put in cream of tartar and kaolin clay. I do not grind those because those are okay. I also use a second powdered surfactant, uh, SCI noodles, and I grind those up as well. So all of that is in the bowl and ready to be mixed up, as well as my um, yellow number six lake that I put directly into the dry powders. No need to bloom lakes. You can put those right into your dry powders. Um, lakes and micas are dispersible in oil. Um, as opposed to FDC dyes, which are disposable in water. So today I'm using the lake. I wanted a nice orange color, so I put in quite a bit. I have my citric acid off to the side. That's the last thing that we're going to be adding today. So without further ado, let's make some stuff, shall we? First thing we're going to do is we're going to mix this all up with our handy-dandy, really, really old hand mixer. It's going to be a little bit loud, so forgive me for that. That's mixed up pretty decently so far. Um, obviously, I can see that there's a whole bunch of um, little clumps with the colorant. So once I get my wet ingredients in here, I'm going to use my hands to continue mixing to try to eliminate as many of these clumps of colorant that you see in here. Try to just get rid of as much as that as you possibly can. So we're going to have to do that with our hands. As soon as I add my wet ingredients, then I can take, it's safe to take off my mask because this, the fine little particles won't be um, as prevalent. They'll still be there a little bit, but it's not going to be as bad as when everything was dry. And you just saw, I'm sure, in the camera that everything just kind of poofed up. All right, now for our wet ingredients. In here, I've got my mixture of my... Um, orange and tangerine fragrance, uh, essential oils I'm using, as well as my polysorbate and my binder, which is a 70% witch hazel to 30% rubbing alcohol, 99% rubbing alcohol. That's what I call my bomb spray, and that's what I use. That's what works in my recipe as my binder. So I'm going to put this right on in there. What a beautiful, beautiful orange color. Hopefully it will retain that beautiful color once I add everything. Because it all looks good before you add your citric acid in there. It's all nice and bright and vibrant and beautiful. Then you add more white powder in there and it's like, oh, okay. Well, that didn't last long. Okay, also at the same time, I'm going to be putting in um, my butters. I use shea butter and cocoa butter. So that is going to go into the mix as well. These are all the wet ingredients. And by the time this is all mixed in, then I'll be ready to add the last ingredient, which is the citric acid. Again, this is going to be loud, you guys. Turning this off a little bit prematurely just so that I can scrape the edges of the bowl because I see that there is a lot of colorant on the side of the bowl. 
and this is great this color is exactly what i wanted a nice bright vibrant orange to match this the fragrance that i'm using which is the orange and tangerine essential oils smells really really good this would be a great uh you know not like a lot of people do baths in the morning but some people do this would be a great wake me up kind of a scent you know this will really get your engines going in the morning all right i'm feeling pretty confident now that the powders are mixed up enough that i can take my mask off all right see how dirty i am and, and my apron is filthy you guys it's just the way that it is all right Woo. that's a little bit better you can hear me a little bit more now i think just trying to get on the side of the bowl here get every little bit of all that color that clings to the side of the bowl before i add my last step which is my citric acid and you can already see that this is holding together pretty well. We'll see what happens once I get my citric acid in here. It may be a little bit too dry in every recipe, you know, like I use the same recipe obviously, but every batch I should say will be a little bit different depending on what additives and what colorants and what fragrance and everything. There's just a whole bunch of what ifs that go into your mixture and how wet or how dry you want it to be. So again, last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our pre-measured and sifted and ground citric acid. It's the very last thing that we're going to add all right into the pot there. And again, we're going to use our mixer so it might be, might be kind of loud. in here with our hands again and get down to the bottom here make sure that we have everything mixed in and that there's not a big big clumps and big spots of white hanging out down on the bottom here from the citric acid that we just incorporated this is feeling a little bit dry to me but we'll we'll find out in a minute when i go to try to mold All right, this is looking like it's incorporated the color and all the powders. I'm not seeing any clumps or big white patches. Give me one moment, you guys. I actually forgot to grab my little container of my embeds. Hold, please. All right, I'm gonna use yellow embeds today. Yellow and orange seems like a no-brainer, really. All right, I'm bringing my tray in. This is the mold we're going to be using today. It's just a regular 2.75-inch round sphere mold from Kata. So we're just doing, going to do the round ones today. No, no fancy shapes or anything like that. All right, let's see about this mix now, how, how wet or dry this, this actually is. We'll see how this works out. A little bit in there stick one of my end beds right in the middle just loosely you guys don't don't overstuff these at all just very very loosely you can see it's it's not packed too too far above the line because I don't really like to have a big Saturn ring some people do I do not that's about enough for me put that down on the top give it a nice little push Scoop that out of the way, turn it over. I'd like to give it another little push. 
get my handy dandy spoon for beating the snot out of it if I need to. But we're just going to go like this to release it. Clean up some of the edges here. We're going to see if this is going to stay together or not. Sometimes once I get it out of the mold, I like to give it one final little push again just to get a little bit more of that Saturn ring off of there. And then I just use the back part of my spoon to go along the entire outside edge to try to get as much of that off as I can. A couple little taps on the top, a couple little taps on the bottom. We'll see if this is going to stay together. Looks okay so far. So I think the mix is okay, hopefully. I don't know. It seems like it's a little bit, I don't know. It seems a little dry to me. This one seems like it's okay. It's holding together. It's not powdery. It doesn't look like it's going to fall apart, but we'll see. Let me grab this table and put it next to me with my handy dandy little um, container there, my Sterlite container. It's an ornament container for the Christmas ornaments. I picked up a bunch of those this year for my drying trays just because they work really well with the rounded bottom. Um, I think I got them at Big Lots. Uh, they were clearanced down to, I think, $5 each, which wasn't really that great of a savings, to be honest with you, because they're normally, I believe they're normally $6. And so they clearanced them down to five. But you got to strike while the iron is hot because these things are a hot commodity and they don't last. And the second that they go on sale and clearance, boy, they are bought up quickly. All right, so that was our first bomb, and that worked out pretty well. Um, I'm going to keep going and see, see how this goes, you guys. I don't know. I'm a little skeptical on, on how dry this is, so I'm going to get my spray bottle. Matter of fact, I am just going to give it a little bit of a spritz. This is 99% um, rubbing alcohol, so it, this should not activate my dry mix at all because it's, it's alcohol. It's going to evaporate out. There's no... Well, there's 1% water in the 99% alcohol. So just to, just to moisten it, just, just a tad, it was feeling a little bit too dry. Everybody will tell you you want a wet sand consistency. That's what you will hear on the internet all over the place. And that means so many different things to so many different people. Um, to me, I, I want like a damp, a damp sand. Um, and that's about what I have right now. So, all right, let's keep going. I'll put the rest of this in here. That fell down on the bottom. This is just a um, um, cat litter box, you guys, from the dollar store. Works great for making your bath bombs. Keeps everything nice and neat and tidy all in one area. It's like a spill zone. All right, stick my embed in there. Very loosely, you guys. I'm not. I'm not packing this. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of crumbling it up a little bit as I'm putting it in. I want very, very light, loose mixture. All right. Turn it over. More pressing, and then you just kind of lift up and down your cylinder on the outside so that you're just left with your cups brush off as much as you can. Again, I, I like to give another little bit of a push once it's outside of the cylinder to try to get rid of as much as this, of that Saturn ring as I can. It's just easier for me. It's not that I don't like the look of the Saturn ring. I love the look of the Saturn ring. Um, but for me, it's easier to wrap my bombs with my label that goes all the way around the diameter, the perimeter of my bomb, and then I shrink wrap them. So for me, it's just easier if I have barely a Saturn ring. Okay, so there we go. There's our second one. Looks beautiful, nice and smooth and round. And hopefully these will stay together. <laughs> Right. Waste not, want not. We just pick this back up, put it in, make our little hole, stick our embed in the middle, and again, just very loosely. I mean, I'm, I'm 
like kind of breaking things up with my fingers as I'm just letting it fall on the top. All right, put the top cup on there. Get some of that out of the way, turn it over, press it again, loosen up our cylinder. Take our cylinder all the way off and brush down your sides as best you can. Boy, this really does smell wonderful. The orange and the tangerine together. And I, again, I give it another little push just to try to get rid of more of that Saturn ring. Okay, that looks good. Some taps on the top. And there we go. And there we go. Beautiful, smooth, round, gorgeous. They smell fantastic. All right, you guys, I'm going to keep on going with the rest of these, but you get the point. Um, this was just a very short little um, video on how to make the round sphere shaped bath bombs using the Kata molds, the 3D printed Kata molds. And this is scented with orange and tangerine. So I'm going to keep on going and get the rest of these done. And um, until we meet again, be well, stay safe. We'll see you soon.